Welcome back to the DFS Special. I'm your host, your DFS Jerusalem, uh, coming to you live from the DLS. You got 150 entries, and then you're a shark, and I don't fuck with you. So, there's too much good shit on here. So, be often imitated, never duplicated. I'm here with my lovely co host. Thank y'all. Beautiful. Stay safe. Enjoy. I may have been calling in to work. <laughs> you're gonna be in the running for the snowflake of the year. Get your shit together. With your snowflake. I'm here at the crib, man, and I'm just finishing up. Uh, it's not. Uh, throw them bitches in the main. I'm telling you. You're gonna see the results, bro. You're gonna see. Just this is what's really gonna help you out. You know how I feel about the home dogs. There's a lot of fight in the home dogs, and I really think a lot of shit to go over tonight. Uh, the, uh, who that? Score all the points away. Player of the night. Get them in your lineups. Get them in there. And let's go get this one. Thursday. Let's go and remember in the sweatshop, we always keep it 300. Welcome back to the DFS Sweatshop. I am your host, the DFS Jerusalem. And you can follow me, of course, on Twitter at DFS Jerusalem. Today, we're going to be talking about yesterday's uh, NBA, or excuse me, MLB slate of games. Uh, had a ton of games, but it was 15 games. It was a tough one for me. I did not make a profit today. Uh, this is one of those days, man, where, you know, and, and what it was, just like I was telling the cats in the VIP, I felt so comfortable. I felt so comfortable. Uh, in the turbo, in the five-game turbo, but the lure of you know uh, getting that high-dollar uh, you know entries in, in, into the main kind of took me a lot off of what I, what I originally set out to do. I wanted to just make some lineups in the in the turbo, and if I really liked them, throw them into the main. But I ended up uh, getting changing some shit up, getting a lot of Scherzer and a lot of Conley. Oh my God, that dude was fucking horrible. One of the worst pitching performances I've seen so far this year. Also had some Arizona stacks that did not uh, play well. So it, it was tough. It, it, it was a tough day, but we have those. And, and that's the point to managing your bankroll because if you don't spend it all, uh, you're going to have some You're gonna have some for the next day. So the late, state, late, the late slate tilt broke me, even shit to bed. Yeah, it was, it was, it was yo, the main was, the main was tough. Hey, man, love how real you are, man. Phenom Willie, yo, I appreciate that, bro. Thank you. Doretta Levy, what's happening? Good to see you in, in the shop. Yeah, man, Conley, Conley was ass, bro. But, yo, let's, let's, let's talk about some of the top plays uh, from, from yesterday, okay? Now, and, and this is to show you how how uh, how off I can be sometime, okay? Let's, let's take a look at it. Uh, Jacob DeGrom, the leading pitching uh, play on the night. Now, we talked about this. And I was like, yo, only only pitchers I would play in that game, only, pitchers, only thing I would play in that game is the pitching. And that was Scherzer or um, DeGrom. I ended up not having any DeGrom going Scherzer, and every every lineup I didn't have Conley in, I had Scherzer in, or I had a combination of the two, and that killed me. Uh, then we had Charlie Morton, who we were on. I had Charlie Morton a lot uh, at 31.5. Marcus Stroman was my favorite pitching play of the day, and I had, a, I had him paired with Conley in some spots. I had him paired with Scherzer, so it was tough. It was tough. Uh, Kenta Maeda, a guy who I was on, oh, I was not on at all. I was completely off of uh, Kenta Maeda. Went out, had a solid performance. Ariel Miranda, another guy at 5.2 that I was not on at all. Uh, Drew Pomerantz, did not play him at all. Uh, Carlos Carrasco, I had uh, one share of Carlos Carrasco, but still, at 10K, you know, 22 points. Uh, you know, you, you could have paid up a little bit more, got DeGrom, and, and really killed it. Uh, Robbie Ray at 22.2. I was on Robbie Ray. I kind of liked him in that spot. Then we had Lance Lynn at 20. Those were the top pitching plays from last night. Some of those guys we were on. Some of those guys we were not. Uh, had Looking at some of the batting, uh, Travis Deneau went ham. Crushed two homers against Scherzer. Uh, Kevin Pillar, a guy that we were on. I had some Kevin, Kevin Pillar. I talked about him. The bad thing is I had uh, Pillar... And Batista, I had those guys to get like a, little, a couple two-man stacks. Uh, Matt Holliday went off for the Yankees. We talked about the Yankee stacks. Uh, Chris Davis, I was not on Chris Davis at all. And the judge, we talked about it. We talked about the judge. You should have had some of the judge. Uh, Ryan Zimmerman also went off at 30 points. Uh, Manny Machado had a really nice one. Some of you guys 
were trying to put me on Machado and I did not listen. I did not listen. Now I I ended up I I ended up listening to you when you said don't fuck with um with uh with CC when you were like yo Mo you're crazy don't play CC. I ended up I did listen there. I'm not a I'm not a complete dumbass. I did I did listen that. I did listen to that. I did not play CC's back there. I got up off of him uh, after we closed the curtain and they pulled me to the side because they do that sometimes. And the, and the VIP, they be like, yo, Mo, I know you're a Yankees fan. Don't be a fucking homer. Don't play Sabathia. And I listened and I didn't. Uh, but I did not get on Trumbull like a lot of you wanted me to. Mike Trout was somebody who we automatically like. You're going to like Mike Trout. He's one of the best hitters in the league. Uh, uh, Guerrero, I wasn't on him. Orlando Arcia, uh, no, I was not on him as well. Jacoby Ellsbury, yes, part of the Yankee stack. Sterling Castro, yes, part of the Yankee stack. Also had uh, Garcia. We talked about him. There's a guy in here, man. His name is Edwin Neves. This dude is a pure White Sox fan, and he is the main reason why so many of, of us in the shop give those guys attention. So shout out to you, man, because, yo, I, I, I only played White Sox because of, of how much he talks about them and how much I've been able to learn about them listening to him you know, talk. So my, my White, Sox stack, White Sox stacks are what really saved me from losing my complete buy-in as well as making those lineups in the turbos and, and, and playing well there. So that was my night. I hope you had better nights than I did. Just got a, another notice from the homie uh, Severino. Man, he went ham again. Won a few stacks in NBA. God damn, that dude be getting it in. Uh, my Chicago White Sox stacks crushed, but you had, you had Max you had Max Scherzer. Yes. The White Sox got it done, man. I had a couple bats from them tonight. They did, man. That was awesome. And the fact that we had a cat in here telling us to play those specific guys, and we had a few cats that were on them, that's cool. That's what we talk, That's what we like. Even even when it came down to the Cleveland game, yo, dude was like, yo, I live in Cleveland. It's raining, but it's going to let up a little bit. I think the game's still going to play. Like, shit like that, man. Like, really networking and, and helping each other out. That is what the shop is all about, man. That's why I love this shit so much. Word. I mean, I, I can't, I, you couldn't ask for a better group of guys, man, to help us through this shit, man. So, like I said, we do have 15 games uh, on tap for the day. Uh, they're going to be starting at 1 o'clock. That's when the first pitch goes out. And, of course, uh, at 105, it's going to be the Baltimore Orioles and my New York Yankees. I believe you got Michael Pineda on the mound for the Yankees and uh, Ubaldo Jimenez. Uh, we can check and make sure. Because, you know, sometimes Roto Kill will be tripping. Be tripping. So we can make sure that we got... Yeah, make sure we got everything. And I, what I'm using is my P, my PlayStation 4. Going, you know, right before the show, I, I should have started the show a little earlier. But I was I'm in season mode in my uh, in my MLB the show. I'm telling you, bro. If you don't have MLB the show, you are fucking losing right now. Get this. Yo, I created myself right. Got drafted to the Astros. Fuck around, didn't save it. The file corrupted. Whatever happened, so I had to delete it. So I started over. Now I'm playing for uh, uh, Double A. Double A uh, Toronto Blue Jays. I'm pretty bad. I'm batting like 210, but I'm crushing fucking homers because I figured out how to guess pitches. Now I'm guessing pitches. I am crushing. Okay. Uh, the batting average is at 210. I'm leading the Double A league with like 22 home runs with like 40 games left to go. I'm really good. I wish I had a PS4. Yo, get you one, bro. Get you one. Get you one. I'm, am I bunting? No, they don't have juice. They don't have the juice in the uh, on the show. They don't have the juice. No, they don't have no. They don't have it for Xbox One. Yo, I got that's. I'm an Xbox guy, I, and I have an Xbox One. And you know, I was like, oh shit, because I, I saw the homie Gundacker was like, yo, the show just came out. The shit is bomb. So I'm like, oh shit, I'm gonna let me turn on my Xbox One. I can order the game and download the game. Bam. So I'm like, okay. So I, I go to our, uh, MLB in the in the Xbox store, and it's this little shit with Corey Seager on it, and it looks like it's old timey cartoon baseball. And it's called RBI. 2017. So I'm like, all right, cool, the show. And so I buy it and I download it. I'm like, no, this is not the show. This is some bullshit. It's like 20 bucks. This is bullshit. It's whack as fuck. It's horrible. It, 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 unfortunately, it's the only like truly MLB licensed game. Yo, Gun Dagger, that's my dude, man. I fuck with that dude. Yo, this shit, this shit is whack. So I'm like, yo, fuck it, Gun. I think I'm going to go ahead and just buy a PS4 just so I can play the show. And that's what I did, man. The show is the shit. The show is the shit. It's my favorite MLB game ever. I love this fucking game. I was a little bit off topic, but it's baseball related. Get the show. Get the show. All right, so uh, back to uh, my New York Yankees and the Baltimore Orioles. Listen, the Yankee bats are hot right now. Ubaldo Jimenez is horrible. Play some of the left-handed Yankee bats in this game, period. 
we saw what happened tonight. Uh, you saw Matt Holiday crush. You saw uh, Jacoby Ellsbury crush. You saw Chase Henley. Br I mean, all of them. The judge came in, dropped the gavel. Aaron Judge, that's my dude. So uh, get you some Yankee bats tomorrow against the Baltimore Orioles. They're going to be very solid at home. 0% chance of rain. 8-mile-per-hour wind shooting out towards center field. Uh, it's going to be mostly cloudy. The humidity is at 61%. Dew point at 63. Pineda should have no problem striking out uh, the Ogres. I agree with that. Because we know, uh, let's, let's, taking a look at it really quick, when we look at the team stats, right, uh, as it applies to strikeout rate, to K rate, you know, see how many, uh, let's look at where they are as far as K rate. Okay, Orioles, 22.3% K rate. Now, that's not completely horrible or league worst, but it's up there. Anytime you get that K rate over 20%, Against a strikeout pitcher, a pitcher that kind of thrives on strike or strikeouts, you can take a look at that cat. And the fact that they're not in Camden Yards, uh, I definitely think that we can rock with uh, with, with, with some with some of them with, uh, with Pineda. So I kind of like Pineda tomorrow. He's somebody who I'm going to be on initially. All right, um, Jimenez. No, I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not at all on Jimenez. Uh, don't love any of the Baltimore bats. However, if you do want to take a shot at some of the left-handed guys. Chris Davis kind of comes to mind. Maybe some Seth Smith if you want to go that cheap at 3.4. But yo, uh, I like I like Pineda tomorrow. And this is this is part of the early. Excuse me. The uh, yeah, because we got we got seven games in the early, eight games in the main at seven o'clock at the main. So the next game we're talking about is the New York Mets and the Washington Nationals. Uh, this game of course is in Washington. It's a zero percent chance of rain. Ten mile per hour wind going up towards center field. We've got on the mound. Uh, I believe we got Strasburg and. Let's take a look at the Mets, who the Mets are going to be pitching tomorrow. Because you can't trust Roto QL, bro. They be telling you all kind of bullshit. And Zach Wheeler? Zach Wheeler. So you know what that means. You can definitely play some Washington Nationals tomorrow. Especially coming off of this this uh this loss that they just had. You, you're gonna you're gonna wanna Samuel Jones says you wanna you're gonna wanna grab some of those left-handed Washington bats. I am I am all about that. Strasbourg is not the same Strasbourg. Strasburg is not the same Strasburg. And let's go back and talk about my Yankees for a second. Because for the, for, for the first time in a long time, ain't no privilege, pussy, uh, punk ass, uh, white collar style player on my Yankees team. This team is hardworking. They run out plays. Uh, they, 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 they play. They play kind of small ball, but they do have some pop. You know what I mean? And I, I, this is a Yankee team that I'm not really used to. I'm used to like, you know, pinstripes. You know, the 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 clean cut, no no shave. You got to shave, a pretty boy, hundred million dollar go buy. Let another team build a guy up through their farm system, and we just swoop in and buy him and shit like that. I'm used to that type of shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm used to, I'm used to that type of shit. I'm sorry, PG thirteen. I'm sorry. I, I'm used to that type of stuff with the Yankees. But this, this Yankee team, you know, looks like a, a, a really good, solid group of guys, man. You know what I mean? I, I, I like this Yankee squad. When I saw Jacoby Grand Stam, I knew my night was over. <laughs> Coming from Seth Rubin. All right, so, uh, so we got the Mets here and the Washington Nationals. And who would have thought that without their best batter, uh, probably their best player on the team, Jonas Cespedes, uh, the cespedes uh Mets, we would see them go out and crush against Scherzer, man. That's just how weird and wild uh, this thing can be, man. Now, Bryce Harper is at 5.4. He's dropped tremendously from that 6.1 he was when he was in Coors. Uh, so I, I like him in this spot. You know, I definitely think we can take a shot at him, most certainly. I like I like a couple of the left-handed bats uh, when it comes to, like, you look at Daniel Murphy, Bryce Harper, I like him. If Adam Eaton does play, you might have a uh, shot with him there. All the Yankees hitters one through nine are dangerous. It's insane. It's 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 pretty it's pretty dope. I like that. FYI, Strasburg has struck out ten, eight, and eight, and earned runs of two, two, and three in the last three games. Looks fine to me. And and but but this this I'm talking about. Look, you remember you remember old Strasburg, like the unhittable Strasburg. This is not that dude. This is not that dude. And and and, and against the Mets, you know I don't mind seeing them knock the ball around the yard a little bit. I don't know if I'm going to be paying up eleven point six for him. You know what I mean? Eaton gonna miss time. Uh, they carried him. They carried him off the field, so Eaton probably won't play. 
Yankees heating up real. Judge, eight-game hit streak, got to end soon. Is Aaron that dude? I think he is, bro. Dude crushes. Dude just crushes. He does. Did Greg Bird do anything? I know. Greg Bird didn't play very well. I mean, he was like the only one who didn't do nothing. He was the only one. All right, so next game we're talking about is the Tampa Bay Rays uh, and the Toronto Blue Jays. We've got Francisco Liriano at 8.4, uh, going against Matt Andreese at 6.8. Eight and a half point run total. I think maybe, maybe I was a day early on uh, Jose Batista. And I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of going to go back there, I think. Because uh, usually when you have a feeling about a guy, it's, it's there for a reason. It's there for a reason. So, uh, Liriano at 8.4, I think it's somebody you can definitely take a, take a look at. Uh, just for the simple fact that you've got you know, some of the better players, so, uh, some of the better guys uh, from the Tampa Bay Rays are going to be those left-handed guys that don't hit lefties well. You can take a shot at some of those guys. Matt Andreese against the Toronto Blue Jays will be a really solid uh, salary saving option. 6.8. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. And even I do like Francisco Liriano some too. Next game we're talking about is the Chicago White Sox and the Detroit Tigers. We've got Derek Holland on the mound for the Chicago White Sox and Michael Fulmer at 10.5 against the Detroit Tigers. You know what? I'm not playing. I'm not spending 10.5 uh, against the White Sox. I don't think we can pick on those guys anymore. Tell me, tell me. Yo, Josh Dewey says, I'm going to Batista. He hit a couple to the warning track today. I saw those, and I was on him. I was like the only one last night saying, yo, I'm going to play Batista in this spot. And I think I was a day early. That happens a lot. That happens sometimes. Sometimes we're just a day early, especially in MLB. So, uh, Michael Fulmer at 10.5. The, the White Sox are hitting the ball too well right now uh, for me, you know, to pay that much for a guy uh, that that could that could get get hit easily. Liriano made it through one 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 third of an inning earlier this year. Bats and Pillar for the Jays, okay. Batista and Pillar, you like for the Jays, okay. So I, I don't have an issue there, uh, rock, rocking with um, some. Now, now this is this is the, this is the, this is the deal. If I'm not going to play Fulmer, am I going to use some of the Chicago White Sox bat uh, to attack to attack Michael Fulmer? That's something that we've got we've got to negotiate as well. So Derek Holland not really in play for me. Uh, the D Detroit Tigers were pretty pretty decent today as well. So I think both of these teams the bats have kind of woken up. And at eight eight uh, run total, I, I don't think I want to touch uh, too much pitching in this game. Now we have got 43 percent chance of rain in this spot. Uh, 12 and 12 mile per hour wind going out toward right field. So be careful because this game is one of those that has the possibility of delay or rain out. And it is a one one ten first pitch goes out. So and Dreezy gets hit hard when bats make contact. I think he's like a fly ball pitcher. I think he's a fly ball pitcher. Next game we're talking about is the Cincinnati Reds and the St. Louis Cardinals. We've got Bronson Oroyo. At 5K, going up against Mike Leak. I like Mike Leak. I like Mike Leak in the spot. At 7.8K, I think he can be a decent play. A guy that knows how to get people out. Uh, this game also has the possibility of delay or rain. Uh, rain out, excuse me. It's 8 mile per hour away coming back toward the batter box. 50% chance of light rain. So uh, we, we make sure... Uh, Kirk Cubs said, I don't like Leak versus Cincinnati. Now, and, and see, and that's a key statement that you're making. Because if I'm saying that I kind of like Mike Leak, if I'm saying I kind of like Mike Leak, and you're saying you don't like Mike Leak, then that means you should be liking some of those Cincinnati bats. Uh, that means you should take advantage, especially some of the left-handed bats, uh, guys like Billy Hamilton, uh, who can also steal a bag. You talk about Joey Votto, Scott Shebler, who is batting very hot right now. I think Leak could get hit up here, man, and it, it, it's possible. And see, and that's the type of shit I want. See, I don't want. See, I, I don't want you to come in here. And then you feel something, and then you listen to me, and then you don't feel what you felt anymore. No. No. That's not what I want. If I say I like Mike Leak, and you say you don't, I want you to take it to the next level. I want you to be 100%. Make a stand. And say, hey, I don't like Mike Leak, and I'm going to show you why I don't like Mike Leak. I'm going to play the, these left-handed bats from Cincinnati, and then they're going to punish Mike Leak. And then you'll be right. Or Mike Leak will mow their ass down, and I'll be right. Either way, we're right. One of us are right. That's how, that's what I can do. Jay Guns. Shout out to Jason Gunson, man. Good to see you in there, man. Votto is the only guy on that squad I am scared of. 
Yo, I like I like Shebler right now, man. Shebler is Shebler is hitting the ball. Shebler really is. St. Louis lit up Arroyo already this year. You already know what time that is. Arroyo is the early Shelly candidate. Easy. Arroyo is the early Shelly candidate. Yo, this dude is this dude is horrible. This dude is horrible. Eight and a half uh, run total here. So uh, I definitely think you can take advantage of some of uh, the St. Louis guys to attack Bronson Arroyo in this spot. I think that that's more than fair. That's more than fair. Next game we got Chicago Cubs and the Boston Red Sox. Yo, I only played I only played uh, one Chicago Cub today, one, and it was a guy that I really liked. Well, it's not just me because I mean the dude is a fucking one of the best players in the game. He's a fucking MVP. Of course, you like him. Everybody likes him. But we talked about him a lot last night. We talked about Chris Bryant a lot. And he had a decent game. Didn't really crush, crush, crush. But he did hit a jack and then score a run. So he had like 16 points, I believe. So that was pretty solid. Pretty, Chris Bryant was very solid. Now, against, I think Stephen Wright is going to be on the bump at 6.3. Uh, so, you know, I think we can go back to the well with Chris Bryant at 5.1. I think they're going to want to come out and, and, and play well uh, against the Boston Red Sox, of course. Yo, how about the Red Sox, bro? Red Sox went off today. Today was one of those times when you could have stacked the Sox. They went off today. It was especially especially Benintendi, who we talked about on the show last night. I like Benintendi. Uh, John Lackey at 8.1. You know what? I am just not in love. I'm just not in love with Chicago pitching. The Chicago rotation should be so much better than they've been playing. They really should. Uh, can stack the Red Sox tonight. I think you can. That's what I was saying. Just had bad... Yeah, yeah, yo, the, the, the Chicago Cubs rotation, man, is just not performing as well as I envisioned. They're just not, you know? And, and, and for that reason, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to play John Lackey because last time he lackeyed command, he lackeyed uh, uh, velocity, he lackeyed movement on the, on the, off, on the, on the, on the fastball. He, he, horrible. So I, and I'm going to attack Lackey tomorrow with some Boston bats. I think tomorrow... It, today is a day where I am going to stack the Boston Red Sox. That's where I'm at. I like I like the Red Sox in this spot. I mean, I rostered that. Okay, that's coming from Seth Rudman. So, uh, I do like a couple of left-handed bats from the Chicago Cubs. Schwarber, uh, Rizzo, somebody who I like. I think we can go back to uh, Chris Bryant. But uh, I'm going to be stacking. I'm, I'm definitely going to be stacking some of those Boston bats. I like that. Uh, we, and we'll talk a little bit about who they will be once we close the curtain inside the VIP. Next, we got the Seattle uh, Mariners and the Cleveland Indians. Uh, raise your hand if the Cleveland Indians let you down today. Oh, my God. Horrible. Horrible. And we got uh, Giovanni Gallardo against Danny Salazar. Now, Salazar uh, Salazar is, is, is the cat that has awesome stuff. Uh, great, great strikeout potential, but he went out last game, uh, the last time he started, and he had a shitty first couple innings, which kind of put him in a hole uh, that he really could not could not dig himself out in order to justify, you know, being 10.2 in salary. Well, he's at 9.8 against the Seattle Mariners, who have not been, you know, crushing uh, lately. So I do think that if you are looking to pay up uh, for pitching to get some, so if you want to buy, if you're looking to buy some great K upside, I think Danny Salazar could fit the bill for you. I like the fact that he's at home. I like the fact that the Cleveland Indians themselves have not been tearing the cover off with the ball, so we may not see a ton of runs uh, in the game. Period. Uh, and 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 there's a good chance that he could get the win in the spot. So at 9.8, I uh, don't really have an issue if you want to play Danny Salazar. I'm a, I would venture to say I kind of like him. If Cruz is out again, give him all the Salazar. That's coming from Jay Guns. Cano and other lefties might do okay, and and that's fair. That's very fair. I was on, remember I was on Cano night before last, right? Didn't play him today. So what does that tell you? I was a day early on him and didn't stick with it. Didn't stick with it. Josh Dewey says he does like Salazar. Ryan Hanniger uh, is the is currently on the ten day DL. Sounds like a lot longer. Ooh. I, 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 I'm going to play some Salazar tomorrow. I am. Next game we're talking about is the Oakland Athletics and the Houston Astros. We've got Andrew Triggs uh, for the Oakland A's and Joe Musgrove uh, for the Astros. 
you know, not in love with either of these pitching options. Uh, but do I do I do I like I don't like these guys enough to attack? Probably not. We got a 36% chance of rain, 17 mile per hour wind uh, shooting out in Minute Maid Park. That's a lot. That's a lot. The humidity is 84%. We've got an 81 uh, degree day out, so that's a lot, bro. Chris leading off, leading home run. Chris Davis. Okay. This game will be trash. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not too tough on them. Oh, you gonna be at the Astros game? All right. Word. 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 Chris Davis again is what Jay Guns likes, man. And, and I, I don't have an issue there either. But to me, this is, the game. The game itself just seems un underwhelming. Don't think I'm, I'm gonna have too much exposure to any of these cats, man. Uh, if I get Brian, if Brian McCann is back in the lineup tomorrow, I'm gonna. I'll like him. Any word on Brian McCann? If he's gonna be playing, because if he's gonna be playing, I'm gonna like him. Any word on Brian McCann? Because if he does play, I, I, I'm gonna like him in the spot against Triggs. But I have no interest in either one of these pitchers. Next game we're talking about is the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Miami Marlins. Oh my God! Did you see this, bro? Dan Strilly is nine point two. Brigman free Jersey Day narrative is all is all I know. <laughs> Coming from Kool Aid, did you see Australia's nine point two? Who the fuck's gonna pay for that? Hell no, I'm not paying no nine point two for no Australia. Especially after how hot the the Pittsburgh uh, uh, bats were today. The price is high, but I like them here. Coming from Christopher Marie, no, I, I I can't do that. That's no. I like the fact that he's at home and he ha he has been playing well lately. Really saw the pitch uh, uh K upside, I believe. But, man, that's a ton, bro. That's a lot to spend for that dude. That's a lot to spend. Yeah, because of his last outing. Yeah. That's a dude that went out and scored at 33 DraftKings points the night when I told everybody to play Senzatella. And Cats played Australia and did even better. <laughs> so, but I, I don't, mm -mm. I, 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 that's a little too much for me. Now you want to play him. <laughs> Pineda 10K also though, right, right. But see, Salazar is somebody who I like. If I'm if I'm gonna pay up that much, you know, I I just I roll Salazar in that spot. I'm going to consider him for sure. Coming from Christopher Marie, uh, so that means what are we thinking about some of those Pittsburgh bats? Ivan Nova is also a guy I think is in a good spot. Nova's pretty decent, man. He had a pretty good start out last time as well. I I, I could be on Nova. I mean, he averages 18.6 DraftKings points. I can get a piece of that. He had 28 against against uh, my Yankees, 19 against uh, St. Louis. He only had four against Cincinnati. That's when he was on that little crushing uh, streak. And but he had 21 against the Braves. So I think I think the way I would go in this spot is going to be Ivan Nova. I like him. Next game we're talking about is the Atlanta Braves and the Milwaukee uh, Brewers. Ah oh, man, Jimmy Garcia on the mound against Jimmy Nelson. I think this is yet another game where we can stack ATL and uh, Brewers. This should be a game stack for us. I have no interest in either of these pitchers. Uh, you can pretty much go anywhere you want to go uh, when it comes to the right-handed bats for the Brewers and anywhere you want to go for the left-handed bats from the, the uh, for, for the Braves. Yo, we, we were on him today. I'm afraid Miami bounces back on him, though. That's coming from Christopher Marie. We're talking about bouncing back on, uh, on Nova. So I like this Braves and Milwaukee game. I think it's a game that we can target. Give me all the Brewers coming from Joshua Dewey. Hernan Perez all day long from Jay Guns. Thames, Braun, okay. Stack Milwaukee. That's what I should be getting. Next game we're talking about uh, is the Minnesota Twins and the Kansas City Royals. Now, this game is in red. It's marked in red. And it has like a high probability of, of, of being delayed or rained out. 72% chance of moderate rain, 95% humidity. 17 mile per hour wind coming back toward the batter box. This is a game that you may want to steer clear of. You may want to steer clear of the Kansas City Royals at home against the Minnesota Twins. We've got Phil Hughes and Jason Hamill on the mound. Uh, and this is a game that I just don't have a lot of interest in anyway. The only interest I would have is to play a pitcher against the Twins because they've been so horrible lately. Um, some of the Royals you could probably take a look at. It could be Mike Moustakis at 3.1. This dude is always cheap. Moustakis is always cheap. And he's always a threat to you know to have a solid game. How about Brandon uh, Brad Moss today, man? Brad Moss got it in. Brad Moss got it in. 
Judy Rodriguez says he likes Hughes in a spot against Kansas City. And we have been able to target Kansas City uh, with, with pitching. We haven't even targeted them with pitching. Straight is all right, but might not get you your money. Your money's worth. Now, okay, I had a question about about, about the Twins. Now, and, and, I'm, and I'm looking at this from a standpoint of Okay, Minnesota Twins, 19.9% K rate. Uh, the team WOBA for the Minnesota Twins is 313. Not very good there. Uh, I, I mean, they, they put up runs in Texas and six more tonight. I don't like them, and I haven't played them. I mean, for me, like I haven't, I haven't been playing Dozier. Uh, it's Sanu, Sanu, uh, Sanu had a big one. Sanu had a big one. He did have a big one. Check Thames, Woba, and Iso versus lefties. Let's see. Thames, yeah, okay. Thames can be lower owned than he should be. Lefty, lefty, and, and he's actually better hitting lefties. That's what I, that's about what I've heard, that he was better hitting left-handed uh, pitchers than, than right. So so that's somebody we can take a look at, definitely. Well, I, well, I, I like I like to stack Milwaukee anyway. So that's where I'm going to go. That's weird. That's weird. And uh, in the second probable game, a game that is marked in red and has a 75% chance of moderate rain, is the Los Angeles Angels and the Texas Rangers. Roll along so we can get to the juice behind the curtain, Mo. Not just line up bills. <laughs> Watch you. All right, so we got uh, Jesse Chavez on the mound at 7K against Hugh Darvish at 11.9. That is a that is a heavy price to pay for Hugh Darvish. Uh, I kind of like Jesse Chavez. I've been playing him uh, the last couple of starts out. I think he's been pretty good, actually. I think he averages, well, he's averaged 17 uh, DraftKings points. The last three games, no, he had a horrible game against Texas the last time. He scored 1.55 points, but he had 24 against Toronto, 18 against the Houston Astros, and 23 against Seattle. So, uh, Harvish at 11.9, a big, big price to pay, but that'll get you off of, of cats like, uh, like, uh, that'll get you off, off of, off of Steven Strasburg, guys like that, you know, Darvish, so, but be, be careful the Angels have been striking up more this year, but be careful because this is a game that does have the probability of delaying or raining out. So, a few bats that I, that I would like in this game. I think I think I take a shot uh, with, with a couple of these t uh, Texas bats too because I mean they've got to wake up at some point, man. They've got to wake up at some point. Nat Yankees, Nats, Brewers. That's who you like. Next game is gonna be the Colorado Rockies and the Arizona Diamondbacks. You know the Diamondbacks let us down. Uh, didn't see monster games. Uh, like we have been seeing, it had to come to an end at some point. Uh, yeah, Darvish is in the main. Darvish is in the seven seven o'clock slate. Uh, nine point run total for the, the Rockies in the Diamondbacks game, as it should be there in Chase Field. Big bats, uh, ten mile power wind going out toward right field. Twelve percent humidity, zero percent chance of rain. The game should play without incident. Uh, going back to the D backs is what a lot of cats are saying. We got Tyler Anderson at six point two and Zach Grinky at ten point one. What does what, what do you think about Grinky in this spot? I believe Grinky has been playing fairly decently over the last few games. Uh, 11.6, 26 against uh, Cleveland, 1.4 against the Dodgers, 26 against San Diego, 33 against. So he's had good starts against bad teams. So I don't think that the Colorado Rockies qualifies as a team that I want to play Zach Grinky against. So I will not play. I, I'm not on Grinky tomorrow. I'm not. His his last his last couple of starts well he he was good in those two starts against San Diego, but after that he hadn't he hadn't played very well. He hadn't played very well. He scored eleven point six uh, fantasy points against uh, the San Francisco Giants the last time he played. That was the last his last start. So I don't, I don't think I'm going to be on Grinky at all. The BVP is bad. Okay. Okay. Now some of those right-handed bats. Gunnison says no Grinky for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He 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 did the motherfucker with San Diego. He he tore them up two games in a row. 
Uh, now, taking a look at the Arizona Diamondbacks, man, against Tyler Anderson, I think we can roster all up and down this order when it comes to the right-handed bats. I kind of like a lot of these cats, man. Uh, Goldsmith, Owings, uh, Pollock, Yasmani. I think Yasmani is my, my favorite play right now going against Tyler Anderson. I, I really like him. Colorado does not equate to San Diego or San Francisco right now. They do not. They do not. And for that reason, I am not on Granky. Samuel, I like the drum, says he likes Granky either. I can get, I can dig it. People will be butthurt, so they'll be low-owned. The, the Diamondbacks, I can agree with that, definitely. It happens like that, man. You gotta have a short memory in DFS. The Diamondbacks are about to cool off, coming from the YouTube fam. Zona stack on deck, no doubt. Next game we got is a 9.05 first pitch. It is the Padres, again, uh, in that big old pitcher's park, uh, playing in San Francisco. AT&T Park, we've got 10 mile per hour wind, shooting out toward right field. 0% uh, chance of rain, 50% humidity, 69 degrees is what we have with a dew point of 50. Seven and a half uh, run total. We've got uh, Julia Chasson at 6.7 against Matt Cain at 7.7. .7. Yo, Matt Cain got it in last time. I think Matt Cain's going to be like some cheap chalk tomorrow. Cain has been very solid, bro. I mean, yo, dude is on some like Cy Young type shit. Let me, let me, let me, let me show you the last games, okay? In, um, in, the last, in the last four starts, okay? Uh, 2.35 against San Diego. Okay, 20.45 against Arizona, 16.15 against Kansas City, and 21.7 against the Dodgers. I think in this big old pitcher's park uh, where, 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 where balls do not fly out there with ease, I think Matt Cain is a very solid mid-level pitching prospect. Uh, he's going to be one of my top three pitchers that I'm going to use. I'm going to fuck with uh, Matt Cain tomorrow. And I think Chasson is somebody that we can definitely attack uh, when it comes to some of those big left-handed bats. Like, you look at Brand Belt, uh, you look at uh, maybe some Joe Panic or something like that. I, I like Posey in this spot at 4.2, even though I hate paying up for catcher. There's a few guys that I like. Hunter Pence at 3.9, right-handed bat against Chasson. Yo, I, I kind of like some of this. I'm all good with this. I, I'm, I'm, I'm all, yeah, I'm all good with this, but I definitely do like Matt Cain in this spot. San Diego, 31.5% K rate. The past three games. That's, yes. Belt is awful versus Chasen. Good point, Seth Rudnick. Kane will be my starting pitcher. <laughs> I told you. Okay. So, and the last game on the slate uh, is a 9-10. Uh, that, and that's pretty cool. Because the last game is 9-10. The Anaheim Angels probably will not keep us up all night. So, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. So, we got the Philadelphia Phillies and the LA Dodgers. A uh, seven mile per hour wind going out toward right field. Zero percent chance of rain. Twenty percent humidity. Game should play without incident. Eighty degree weather in LA. Uh, we got Brandon McCarthy at eight point nine against Zach Eflin at five point seven. Uh, looking at Eflin, this just came in. Chris says he likes McCarthy. Looking at Eflin, uh, eleven point six five against the Mets and seventeen point three against the Atlanta Braves. Nah, I'm good. I don't want him. McCarthy and Dodgers stack. Uh, you like several LA Dodgers bats? I do too. I do too. I uh, yeah, I do too. I like some of the some of the Dodgers bats here. These guys hit hit righties. They struggle against lefties, but they really hit righties. And at home, I like the spot. Seven point five is the run total in the spot. It might be a McCarthy and Kane night for some of us. Boring game right here. The Dodgers games have been yo. The Dodgers games started out. Like nuts with scoring, and they're not, they've really tapered off, and they really haven't been putting the bat on the ball like they, like they were uh, the first couple of weeks of the season. So, I mean, yeah, roster those guys with caution, but those are a few guys uh, that I do like. There are a few guys, some of the left handed bats from the Dodgers are guys that I'm going to take a look at. And I do think Brandon McCarthy is in play against the Phillies in this spot. I do. So, like I said, let's go ahead and see how the whole thing shakes out, man. We've got. 15 games all together. Seager as a one-off, maybe. I can dig that. We've got 15 games all together. Uh, welcome back to the DFS Sweatshop. I'm your host of DFS Gurus. You can follow me on Twitter. Like <laughs> the big homie. All right, so check it out. We got here uh, 15 games, right, starting at 1 o'clock. First pitch, 105. The Yankees uh, at home against the Baltimore Orioles. We've got seven games complete in the early. 
Uh, then we've got a three-game afternoon at 2.15, a two-game turbo at 4.05, eight games starting, that's the main, at 7.10, 8.10, we got three games in the night, and then we have two games in the late night. So chances are uh, these games will be over in time for us to really get in and chop it up for Sunday slate. So now, uh, that we went through the entire uh, slate for you, talked about that, some recap a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and shoot behind the curtain, deal and talk to my constituents where we're going to be making up our, our core stacks. Uh, we're going to be coming up with uh, uh, the one-offs that we like. We're also going to be talking about our pitching, kind of narrowing that stuff down. And if you want to know what we've come up with, it's very simple. Go to the website, www.thedailyfantasysweatshop.com. That is where you receive all our tips and tricks and tutors that will make you a profitable MLB DFS player. So come and join us. We're going to go in here and chop it up. The number one thing I want y'all to do when you're in the sweatshop is keep it 300. Now let's get to it, y'all.